Unit 1, Lesson 5. Bases and Heights of Parallelograms. Number 1. Select all parallelograms that have a correct height labeled for the given base. In relation to the base, the height's going to be at a 90 degree angle. Figure A. They've labeled height and base, and you'll notice that the height is at a 90 degree angle compared to the base. Figure B. They've labeled the height and the base, but you'll notice that the height is not at a 90 degree angle compared to the base. If the height were located here in purple, it would be at a 90 degree angle. Figure C. They've labeled the base and the height, and you'll notice that the height is at a 90 degree angle compared to the base. Figure D. They've labeled the height and the base, and the height is at a 90 degree angle compared to the base. For figures A, C, and D, I'll highlight the 90 degree angle in yellow. And for figure B, I'll highlight the angles in orange, and you'll see that one angle is greater than 90 degrees, and another angle is less than 90 degrees. In purple, I've added the correct line for height, which you can see in comparison to the base, is 90 degrees. Number 2. The side labeled B has been chosen as the base for this parallelogram. Draw a segment showing the height corresponding to that base. We have a lot of choices as to where we can draw a segment that shows the height corresponding to that base. Here's a few segments that would represent height corresponding to B. 3. Find the area of each parallelogram. To find the area, you multiply base times height. And here we have a base of 4 and a height of 2, so 4 times 2 is 8. The area would be 8 square units. B. We can rearrange figure B so it looks a lot like figure A. Simply rearranging it can help us tell that it has a height of 2 and a base of 5. So the area would be 10 square units. For figure B, you can find the area without rearranging it. Just find the height, which would be at a 90 degree angle compared to the base. And again, we have the base of 5 and a height of 2. And 5 times 2 is 10, so the area would be 10 square units. Figure C. We can also rearrange figure C so it looks a lot like A. Now we can see that its base is 4 and its height is 2. The area would be 8 square units. We don't have to rearrange figure C. We can just locate its base and its height. Its height will be at a 90 degree angle in relation to its base. Here we can see it has a height of 2 and a base of 4. 4 times 2 equals 8. Its area would be 8 square units. Number 4. If the side that is 6 units long is the base of this parallelogram, what is its corresponding height? I've highlighted its base in blue, and the corresponding height is going to be at a 90 degree angle in comparison to its base. Since this makes a 90 degree angle corresponding to the base, I would select C, 4 units. Number 5. Find the area of each parallelogram. A. The base is 9 centimeters and the height is 4 centimeters, so 9 times 4 is 36. The area would be 36 square centimeters. B. The base is 5 centimeters, and if you notice, the 4 centimeter measurement creates a 90 degree angle with the base, so the height is 4 centimeters, and the base times the height, or 5 times 4, equals 20 square centimeters. C. They've identified the base as B. The height would be at a 90 degree angle compared to B. H is the height and B is the base. Base times height equals the area. The area equals B times H or BH square units.
Number six, do you agree with each of these statements? Explain your reasoning. A, a parallelogram has six sides. No, because a parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has four sides. B, opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Yes, because opposite angles are equal, and if opposite angles are equal, the opposite sides will be parallel. C. A parallelogram can have one pair or two pairs of parallel sides. No. Parallelograms have two pairs of parallel sides. D. All sides of a parallelogram have the same length. No, because sometimes all sides of a parallelogram are the same length. E. All angles of a parallelogram have the same measure. No, because opposite angles are equal, but it is possible to have angles that are not opposite to be different measure. Number 7. A square with an area of one square meter is decomposed into nine identical small squares. Each small square is decomposed into two identical triangles. A. What is the area in square meters of six triangles? If you get stuck, draw a diagram. I'll draw a diagram and I'll start with one square meter. Then I'll divide it equally into nine squares. Each square is one ninth of the meter. Next, I need to cut those squares into triangles or in half, which would make each triangle one eighteenth of a meter. In other words, there's eighteen altogether. If I take six out of the eighteen, I have six eighteenths or one third of a meter. The area of six triangles is one-third square meters. B. How many triangles are needed to compose a region that is one and a half square meters? One and a half square meters would be one and a half the amount of the meter square. And since the meter square held 18 triangles and 9 is half of 18, 18 plus 9 would be 27. So one and a half square meters would hold 27 of these triangles.